I've got a simple setup here with a cube and a script attached to it called variables. When I play right now, and I play my game, it loads for a second, okay, there we go. And then the cube will actually start rotating around. This is because of the script that's on it. So let's take a look at the script and specifically how we can add variables to it to make it more effective and more efficient. So right now in my update function that gets called every single frame, I have a transform.rotate being called. Uh, this is gonna affect the cube, right? Anytime we see transform without any sort of prefix, it's gonna just affect whatever the script is attached to. So the cube is spinning right now uh, and it's spinning equally in all axes. I also have a time dot delta time, mul multiply time dot delta time here to um, make this spin frame rate independent. And then I have this multiplied by 10. Uh, this 10 sort of is like the speed that I want this to go. So if I were to boost this up to 100, save it, and play my game, I should see it spin 10 times faster than it was before. Cool, and that looks about right. So I'm gonna pause that and then let's jump back in here. Now, this is a programmer's nightmare. Uh, to have 100 hard-coded in like this. Um, we definitely want this to be a variable instead. What makes Unity such an effective tool at teaching variables and then using them in your games is that you can actually have the variables show up inside the Unity inspector window. So instead of 100 here, I'm gonna say speed, which I of course have to then define up above here. I'm gonna define it outside of start and update. So I'm gonna say public var speed. And for this example, I'm gonna make this an integer. An integer meaning a whole number, so negative one, zero, one are all examples of integers. Uh, now I'm gonna come back over here, and you can see that when I click on my play button this time, the box is not gonna move at all, and it doesn't. But the difference is if I click on my cube and look over to the inspector window, I now have this speed variable that's set to zero by default, but I could make it 30. And I can see I don't even have to start stop my game, I can just let this keep going. So now I make it 300, it spins pretty fast. I can make it 22, whatever I want this to be, and I'm gonna be able to see the result of it in real time. So this is really nice for um, kind of experimenting and getting your game, give it the right balance and the right feel. So now that that's all set, uh, remember when you're in play mode, your changes don't get saved. So you can see when I deselected that, I'm back to zero. So I'd actually have to set this up with a default variable if I wanted it to stick. Now I'm gonna come back over here and I'm gonna show you what else we can do with this. We can actually change this into a float instead. And I'll save this. And then when we come over here and hit play, you can see that I can actually, I'm allowed now to hit a number like, uh, you know, 55.55, right? That's allowed because this is a float value. In fact, if I hover my mouse over the word speed, the variable name, I can click and drag and slow this down if I go one way and speed it up if I go the other way. This is useful for, you know, really quickly testing things out without having to go in here and type every single time, oh, I want it to before, you know, you can just sort of dial it in using this slider. Speaking of sliders, uh, there's another nice little feature built into Unity so that I can actually come over here and before my public variable, I can use the at symbol to define a range. Uh, and if I do this, I don't need a semicolon for this. If I use this, um, special Unity shortcut here, I can just define two floating point numbers. So let's say like 3.0 comma uh, 16.0, maybe 16.4, let me just try that. Save, jump back over to Unity, and look what happens to my speed variable. It actually is gonna transform into a range slider. And the range goes from three to 16.4 and everything in between. So I can hit play now and try this out. And this is super, super useful because you can set up all these parameters where players can, <clears throat> test players can balance things without going nuts, right? Because undoubtedly people are gonna just type in something crazy. This is a good way to try to sort of control that, um, give them some direction. I'm gonna give you one more quick example before I uh, end this video about variables, because we can use other types of variables here too, such as game objects, rigid bodies, transforms, uh, strings. The example that I'm gonna give you right now is a boolean. A boolean is a true or false. <clears throat> and boolean is a great for setting up little different debug sort of uh, functionality. So for example, let me, let me show you here. Let's say public var, this one's gonna be called spinning. Actually, why don't I call this is spinning. I'm gonna make it of type boolean and it's going to equal false. And then down here, I'm gonna make a very quick if statement that simply says if is spinning. 
And if I go ahead and save this and test it, then I should see that a checkbox appears right where the Boolean is. There we go, is spinning. It even separates the is and spinning because of the camel case, it can figure it out. Um, let's say I boost this all the way up to max speed so I can see it going. And I just need to check spinning on for it to go and then off, on and then off. So this is super, super useful because you can have any kind of like uh, UI, some sort of debug log that comes up and uh, turn it on and off so you're not like cluttering your console window. There's a lot of really cool things that you can do with the Boolean while you're building and testing your game, uh, just determining different functions and different sections on and off. So play around with that, check out the different um, types of variables. So again, there's variables for sounds, prefabs, materials, everything you can think of, and you can make them pop up right here in your own custom scripts. Super powerful, try it out.